Hello, welcome back to the video lecture series for Introduction to the Other Programming Using Scala. In this video, we're going to look at how we can put keyboard events into our graphical program so that they can respond to keys that are hit by the, the user. And so we're going to continue building on the example that we had last time where we could draw things. Uh, we had a number of different paths that could be drawn. And now I want to make it so that this panel not only listens to the mouse clicks and the mouse moves, but it also listens to the keyboard. And so to figure out how to do that, we can go to the API. And when we look, we're here inside a panel. Last time, uh, or actually this is inside of the mouse press. Let's go inside of our panel, panel, panel. Uh, last time we listened to mouse, you'll see there is another object in here called keys, and keys is itself a publisher. So whereas mouse uh, had three publishers inside of it, keys is a publisher, and it will publish different events. And we can scroll down and we can look at the types of key events. There are key pressed, key released, and key typed. So the keyboard in some ways, in some ways at least as far as the events go, is a little bit simpler. So if I want to react to it, I just listen to keys and then down in here I can do something like case E where that is a key pressed. Um, turns out that key typed does not uh, allow you to do special keys like the arrow keys. If you want to find out about arrow keys you have to respond to uh, key pressed and key released. So um, that happens to be what I want to do. I want to take one of our little images and I want to treat that image like a uh, like a little sprite that we can move around. Now before we do that though I need to show you one of the challenges in here. So I am listening to keys and in key pressed I have had it say a key was pressed. Now if I run this, one would expect, so I can make it draw, one would expect that if I start typing keys, and which I'm doing right now, that it would print out a key is pressed. But it's not doing that. And the reason for this is in some ways kind of subtle, um, except once you understand it, it, it makes total sense. Remember that GUIs can have multiple elements inside of them. So for example, if I made a GUI and it had five text fields in it, when I start pressing keys, the keys that I press don't go into all five text fields. In fact, they might go into none of the text fields. Because when you write a GUI, there's a, this concept called focus. And your key presses only go to the item, to the component that currently has focus. And the problem right now is that our panel does not have focus. Okay, so I would like to fix this. And just because I'm a little bit paranoid on this, I'm going to fix it in three, I actually want to have it, I'm going to put three things in the code to give it focus. So first off, well it turns out you can't, there's no point in having focus before the frame pops up. So once the frame is up, I am going to have the panel request the focus. But that's not the only place I'm going to put it. Because what happens if it somehow loses focus? What if you click someplace else, but you still want your key presses to come back to it? Well, then one way of doing it is, well, when you click on something, so when the mouse goes down, you have it request focus again. And just for the sake of completeness, I would like to have, we saw last time that there are other events for mouse entered and mouse uh, exited. And so, I'm going to request focus there as well. So anytime you move your mouse onto the area, when you click on it, and right at the beginning of the program, it's going to request focus in all of those situations. And therefore, I can feel fairly confident that it has focus. And so if I hit keys, you can see over here it, it says that keys were pressed. So how do we know what key was pressed? Well, we get these key events. And so for example, the key pressed event has tells you what a what key was was pressed here. 
Now this is a value that gets stored someplace else because it can't just give you like a character. The character would work fine. In fact, for key typed, uh, for key type, they're perfectly happy giving you the care that was typed. But if I use, if I hit the down arrow, what character would that be? Well, that's it's not a character, and so that is why the key press and the key release don't use a care. They use a key here, and all the different values are stored inside of the object key. So if you come and look in this in the API, you'll see there's a whole bunch of different things. The, all of the letters of the alphabet start with, you know, as capitals. And for example, the arrow keys are left, right, up, and down, one, all, once again starting with capital letters. So inside of our code here, what I can do is I could do something like E dot, so I could do this with an if, uh, I'm actually going to do it with a match because I have uh, four of these. So it could be key dot up or key dot down, left, right. Okay. So what do I want to have those things do? Well, as I said, I want to take one of our little images. So I am going to load in an image here. Val is, I'm going to, since I'm only using this in one place, I'm going to go ahead and use the long name, java.x.imageio.imageio.read, a new java.io.file of, let's remember what this is called, artofprog.jpg, of prog.jpg. And I want to have vars for, uh, I can just call them x and y, if we had multiple things that we were drawing. In fact, actually, how about we, um, IMGX, IMGY, because uh, in the next video we're going to put something else in here which will also have an X and Y. Um, okay. After all the paths have been drawn, I want to do a G dot draw image of art image at IMGX. IMGY, comma, null, I have a period instead of a comma there. Let's make sure this is happy code. And there we go. Okay, so we get that image in there now. Um, and I want to make it so that when I hit the arrow keys, that image moves around. So for example, when you hit key up, I want this to do uh, no, IMG Y minus equals one. So it moves up by one, and as we learned last time, we need to make sure that we do a repaint. So down, we'll add one to Y. Remember that our uh, coordinates for, um, for the graphics coordinates are reversed, left and right use the x, left is minus, right is plus, and each of those is set to repaint now, and so if I use my arrow keys, I can move this around. Uh, I also still have the ability to do some drawing in there. Um, and okay, so now we're getting some keyboard input just because I think it would be kind of fun to do. Uh, how about we would put in one other thing. So I want to make it so that the image cannot be moved on top of any of the paths. Yeah, I want to make it so that when I um, draw paths, they have the ability to block. So here I'm just automatically moving up. Um, what I need to do in order for this to, to work 
is I need to only do this in the situation where none of the paths would intersect the new location of my mm -hmm. image. Okay. How can I do that? Well, it turns out that if you go into the general path and then you look into the um, the path 2D, which the general path is a path 2D, uh, you can ask a general path if it intersects a given rectangle. You can also pass it with x, y, width, and height. And so I only want to move if it is true that uh, for all the paths that that path, I want it to um, not be true that that path dot intersects and what is my x, y width and height? Well, img x comma img y minus one because I'm moving up and for my width and my height I want art image dot get width art image dot get height and close that and then I don't really need to do that but I will copy that paste it there and there and there And in this case, I want to check at x plus one. In this case, I want to check at x minus one. And in this case, I want the y plus one. Okay, let's see if that's happy. So right now I can move wherever I see fit. Let's see if I put a line here, it bumps up against it and it will not go into it. I can move down and once I move down I can move over a little bit but then if I try moving up it won't let me. Now their overlap detection is actually not letting me move to some places that I would think I could move to. Um, did I put in the yeah the right width and the height? So that seems to be okay. That's good, and I can't really move up from there. I can move over to there, but no close, no further. Okay, so that's reasonably good detection. I can put in another line here, and then I get stuck between those two. Put in another line up there, and I can only move up to there, and it stops. So uh, that's just you know an interesting little addition that we could put in there, where we use some of the functionality of the geometry objects to put bounds on where this can go and as you saw our user can draw whatever bounds they want for this uh, uh oh but now I drew something that it detects as an overlap and I can't move anymore um, and clearly if I did something like that well it's impossible to move at that point so uh, that shows you how you can take keyboard events remember when you are doing keyboard events you have to worry about the focus I cannot tell you how many students I have had who wind up there, they can't figure out why their keys aren't doing anything, and it all comes down to they never requested focus. So remember to request focus, otherwise your key presses and key releases will do absolutely nothing for you. So that's it for this video, and we'll come back next time, and our last video is going to be on timers, which will allow us to do things like animation inside of our graphics.